WMMS Radio created a musical buzz, not only here in Cleveland, but also with record companies and performing artists. How did the buzzer come to fly on top of the airwaves for so long? Michael Shevsky shares the backstory in his book, Radio Days, ra uh, stories from the front in Cleveland's FM Air Wars. All right. There you go. Hi, Lord. So, I mean, in the 70s and 80s, you know, MMS was probably the biggest rock station in Cleveland history. I don't know, maybe the country. So yeah, absolutely. You were there. One of the most important in the country, too, I might add. And, yeah, I always wanted to work there. In fact, that inspired me back in the 60s to get into radio. And I finally got there. I started doing some work there in 1987. But I have to say, one thing I want to stress about Radio Days is this is not just about WMMS. It's about all the FM rock stations in Cleveland from uh, the early 60s all the way into the 90s. Okay, and you mentioned in the title that there were wars with radio. Was there really a battleground? <laughs> wow, was there ever. I'll tell you what, when I first went into MMS for the interview, I remember walking down the hall and there was a big heavy punching bag there and it had pictures of the competition that David Helton drew. And they said, uh, take a swing at it. They like that when you come by. Uh, you know, one thing <laughs> I do want to mention though, the famous ballot stuffing incident, which I still say is much ado about nothing. Quite honestly, <laughs> MMS would go on the air and say, we've got all these Rolling Stone magazines. Why don't you come out and fill one out? It's when the employees start doing and it got a little testy. However, I don't think that being number one meant anything except bragging rights uh, in the Rolling Stone poll. It did not translate into one ratings point here in Cleveland. I honestly don't believe that. So, once again, I think much ado about nothing. So, it wasn't anything improper to give you an edge up or anything? Well, who said radio is ethical? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The on-air personalities were very important, but yeah. was it really the music that did it for the station? It was music and lifestyle. Radio was lifestyle back then. You didn't have computers. You didn't have video games, really. So it was radio as lifestyle. Started out progressive rock, eventually turned into more top 40 even, but it had something for everybody. Yeah, so everybody did sure. listen, I'll tell you. And we love hearing stories about the stars. Can uh, you share some? There's a million of them. I guess uh, the first big break for MMS certainly came with David Bowie, the Ziggy Stardust Tour, 1972. And David was, you know, he was telling everybody he was bisexual and uh, he, had these, he was going to be assassinated on stage. And who's going to touch this guy? So what happened was uh, a lot of people didn't want to touch him. And frankly, a lot of people weren't coming out to see him. He sold out three shows in Cleveland that year. And the funny thing about Bowie, he always remembered Billy Bass and WMMS for that. And years later, I was talking to uh, Bowie over the phone, and I mentioned how much my wife Janice loved his music, and he said, well, I have to meet her. I said, well, am I, am I going to have a hard time getting backstage? He says, oh, no, and I'm in Cleveland. It's standing, uh, the only people allowed backstage are Gene Scott and anyone from WMMS. So there That's you. fantastic. I was a hero that night. Okay. <laughs> And then there's more. Oh, boy, are there ever. You know, so Joan many Jett. stars. I mean, Joan Jett, uh, when she was here doing uh, Light of Day with uh, Michael J. Fox, they were at the station a lot. In fact, uh, she was doing a special show, and Michael J. Fox just got on stage, started playing away with her, and it was a wonderful moment. That was in 1986, I believe. Then you had people like Alice Cooper and Joe Walsh. Alice Cooper loved Cleveland. And I remember he would, uh, he, that was in 1980. Well, he came here frequently, quite honestly. But I remember once he sat next to me while I was doing the news, and as I put down the scripts, he would pick them up, and he whispered to me, Cleveland has the coolest news. <laughs> I said, well, thank you, Ellis. You know. uh, a lot of people came by, sure. I mean, Joe Walsh, uh, he was here for his 40th birthday, and uh, he was on with Kid Leo, and this was in 1987, I believe it was. At any rate, <laughs> Joe was there, and they had, his, uh, they had a cake there for him, and uh, he looked at Leo, and he says, you can smash it in my face if you want. So <laughs> everybody had a story about uh, about the stars that came through MMS. Oh, I wish we could talk more about yeah. it. We have so many stories, and then there's always so. the buzzard. We didn't get to talk about the buzzard. The Mickey but. Mouse of Cleveland. Thank you, David Helton. <laughs> there you go. There's so much more to tell, and sure. Mike's book, Radio Days, gives us the bird's eye view. To start reading, tune into the information that's coming up next. To find out more, Call Kent State University Press at 330-672-7913 or log on to www.kentstateuniversitypress.com. Next, Tooth Truth.